Now, first up, we have some uh, 2D, other 2D enhancements or two axis enhancements. Uh, on the left, we were talking about two and a half axis profile clustering. Uh, here you can see, you can select all of your curves that are uh, inside of other curves and it'll figure out uh, the clustering for you. And here I was mentioning the, the gouge checking. Uh, if you have multiple curves and you're, I mean, you don't have to go in and clean them up and make sure that they're trimmed and edged and everything like that. Just select all your curves and it'll put a profile around the outer perimeter of all of them. And then uh, additional uh, sock uh, cutting uh, options, we'll be showing you that as well. So let's go into the saw enhancements. Now this may not be used by a lot of people, but we do have some customers that use this uh, a lot. So you may have seen us um, uh, demonstrate this particular part in saw machining. But let's go ahead and look uh, at the dialog for the uh, cut parameters. We've got a lot of new options here. Um, you can choose the cut side, left of curves, right of curves. Uh, that actually flips the, the saw. Uh, the aggregate side of the saw from one side to the other. And you can also, uh, what I really like is this one here, uh, where you can uh, determine the extents of the cut, whether the saw is gonna start on the, at the center of the, of the cut point, or whether it's gonna honor uh, a height of a closed curve cut. And I'll show you that in a second. And then uh, also you got your standard location of cut geometry, cut depth, uh, et cetera. So and also what, the uh, face location is also important. That's a big change too. So now the cutter can either be located uh, at the bottom or the curve can be located at the bottom of the saw or the center of the saw, the top of the saw. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. important too. But let's go ahead and look at this one right here. Uh, this is uh, on this closed slot right here. And let's go ahead and look look at this. And let's go to a right side view. Let's go to the other one. Mm -hmm. I think it's this one. Yeah, there we go. That'll work, I think. Let's go to a, let's go to a wireframe. Let's just walk through this. So the, we selected the lines at the base of the slot. So basically what you can do is you can tell it that you want to <clears throat> honor the height. So that it calculates the contact point and, and it won't violate that point. So you can put a saw cut, uh, you know, inside of a closed slot basically is what you're doing and you won't violate uh, the end. But one thing I do want to mention that you need to make sure it's a little bit different here in the, uh, let's go into the cut parameters. You do need to set a cut depth. Uh, if you're familiar with two axis, uh, uh, like profiling or, or any type of two axis operation, uh, you know, you could just, if your geometry was at the bottom, you could just say, okay, I want a cut depth of zero. You know, everything is zero and it'll just put one pass at the bottom but you need to have the depth in this uh, operation because it, ha it needs that depth in order to calculate the contact point. So you need to have that depth uh, defined. I just want to mention that. Okay, so we're doing pretty good on time. Let's go up to, um, we did the saw Can cutting. Can you show, show yeah. when it's unchecked how it behaves? Yes, yes, we can do that. Let's go over in here, cut parameters. We can just go ahead and change it to center, generate, and let's look at that. So it's going to, the center of the tool is gonna to be on the, the end of the point of the curve, which uh, in this case would gouge out. Yeah, so if you're cutting a slot inside material, completely inside material, then you would use the other option. Yeah. If you're doing a rip cut, where you're actually coming from the outside, you would use this center option. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Yeah, if you're cutting a, an open slot all the way or a closed, closed slot. Okay.